So first of all, one thing I want to make clear. Um, everybody, does everybody know what uh, what G is? The value of, of the gravitational constant of uh, acceleration. You take something, you pick it up, and you drop it. It accelerates at um, do, 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 do. nine point negative nine point eight meters per second squared, or if you're in feet per second, negative thirty two feet per second squared. These are the most common nine negative nine point eight meters per second squared. And negative 32 feet per second squared. So if you're working in feet and seconds, you'll use negative 32. If you're working in meters and seconds, then you're looking at negative 9.8. This is going to only be applicable for like one or two problems. A lot of the rest of them, they're going to be like, you're on this strange planet where the gravitational constant is whatever it is. And so just... Yeah. But like if if it's ever on Earth and they don't give it to you, that's because you're expected to know negative 9.8 meters per second squared, negative 32 feet per second squared. And those are those are actual real life constants on Earth, roughly speaking, near to the uh, near to the surface of the Earth. All right. All right. So let's let's uh, actually say what's going on here um what are we doing today we're going to be able to use the derivative to calculate rate of change and do problems involving velocity acceleration and speed how are we going to do this we're going to remember that velocity is the derivative of displacement and acceleration is the derivative of velocity why are we doing this rate of change problems are guaranteed to be on the ap exam every time every time i have gone and sat in a um in an ap conference thing like the the one time i was gone this past friday and one time over the summer problems like this may not have been it may not have been necessarily velocity of something falling or something being shot out of a cannon or something like that maybe it was um they they did something with bananas and the rate that bananas were being bought and sold or being restocked and sold in a supermarket or something like that. And part of what they're going to make you do is not only know what, um, you know, what's, what's happening numerically, but they're also going to be asking you questions about what does your answer actually represent? What does it mean? And so we're going to try and, um, throw some of that in too just because the 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 way that they score the AP exam it 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 requires that you understand um how to say very specific key things in very specific ways and it's sometimes it almost feels unfair cuz they look at that and go the 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 amount is decreasing by negative three and then it'll be like oh no that's a double negative no you gotta you can't do that so one of the things one of the things to um remember when you take the ap exam and you're writing out your sentences for what things mean and stuff like that it's okay to use weasel words a little bit instead of saying increasing or decreasing just say changing instead of um growing or shrinking just say changing the word change always good because the number will will help dictate whether that is getting bigger or smaller right so don't be afraid of that all right let's do some problems so a lot of these problems are going to be just because this is the section of the book and these are going to come back again and again and again with different flavors like today we're focused on like what Luke was saying, physics, kinematics, right? 
So if we look here, again, it's talking about a body which is really dark. I don't know. But like... So the body is moving around, and this is the function that represents the position of the body at any given time. And they're telling us that we are focused on the interval from zero to five inclusive. So starting at zero and ending exactly at five. And they're telling you that the units for S, which they're giving here as our position. Remember, they use S for position. The units are here in meters, and the units for time, which is our uh, independent variable, is in seconds. So again, you know, we if we go back and think about it, if we are being forced to talk about something falling, which we're not, but if we were, then we would be using the negative 9.8 meters per second number, right? So just be aware. All right. Um, so the first thing we want to do is find the body's displacement and average velocity for the given time interval. So we want to know from 0 to 5, from 0 to 5, how far did it get away from its starting point, right? So for, for A, part A with the body's displacement, we can be like, all right, well, let's find out what what S is at zero, right? And we plug that in and we see that it was seven, right? All right, you plug in zero, t zero squared minus eight times zero plus seven is seven, right? And then we're gonna be like, okay, well, what? where did it go it, at five, right? So let's find out where it ended up at five, S at five. Well, let's look at that. Well, five squared, minus 8 times 5 plus 7. Well, let's do that. 5 squared is 25. 8 times 5 is 40. 7 uh, more than that. So we got... That's a 4. My 4s always turn into 9s. So we got negative 15 plus 7 is negative 8, right? So going from 0 to negative 8, we go a distance of negative 15, right? That's its, that's its displacement. That's how far it has moved. Now, that's not, that's not the total distance that it's traveled, but from the starting point to its ending point, where was it displaced, right? Now let's look at average velocity. Well, how do we find, how do we find velocity? How do we find the average velocity, right? Isn't the average velocity just distance per time. So we went negative 15 feet we went negative 15 feet in how many seconds? From 0 to 5 I want to make sure meters so negative 15 over 5. So the average speed, or the average velocity, I'm sorry, the average velocity, the average velocity is the distance that it traveled divided by the time. And it's meters per second. Distance divided by time, meters per second. So now, how does that compare to speed and acceleration at the end points of the interval? So what they want to know is, for part B, what is the speed at zero and at 
five, right? Because those are the endpoints. Well, how do we find speed? In that, in that the absolute value of velocity, which is the derivative of position, right? So, first of all, speed is the absolute value of velocity. And velocity is the derivative of position. So all we have to do to start this off is say, all right, well, let's find the derivative of the position function. Isn't that 2t minus 8, right? Right? Look, take, we had uh, t squared, bring the 2 down, right? So that's 2t. And then we take the derivative of negative 8t. Well, the, the t is by itself like that, so we get rid of it. There's no, there's no exponent. So it's just when we, when, we, when we take the derivative, it goes away, so we're just left with negative 8. Well, so there's our velocity. And now all we have to do from there is take the absolute value at the points that we care about, at 0 and 5. So what's v at 0? Well, let's plug it in. 2 times 0 minus 8, isn't that just negative 8? What's v at 5? 2 times 5 is 10, minus 8 is 2. So that's your velocity at 0 and at 5. But we want the speed, right? So at t equals 0, speed equals 8 meters per second. And notice, it was negative. Now it's positive, because even though even though the body is flying backwards at that moment, we don't care that it's flying backwards. We're talking about its speed. At t equals 5, the velocity is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is still just 2, so the speed equals 2 meters per second. So just be aware, um, in physics, you would refer to velocity versus speed as a vector versus a scalar. Um, so a vector is a quantity that has a direction to it. That's why velocity can be positive or negative, because we want to know, are we going forward or backward? Are we going north? Are we going south? Are we going east? Are we going west? Whatever. Speed, as a scalar, is just a number. It's a magnitude. It has no direction to it. So think about it like um, if you had me, if you had me for geometry, we talked a lot about how um, in geometry we don't worry about and we don't want to see negative distance because how can you measure with a tape measure and go oh this is negative five feet uh or an angle in geometry not in pre-calculus when we're doing coterminal angles and all that sort of stuff but um in geometry when we're talking about um the angle of say one of the one of the angles of a triangle always going to be positive because we can't conceive of taking a protractor, holding it up to the angle and measuring it and say, oh, this is negative 15. No, you can't do that. It's positive. It's open, right? So here, in a place like this, where we're talking about distance or um, speed or acceleration and all those things with a direction, we have to be careful about 
positive versus negative and what have you. The negative sign has meaning already to it. All right. And so when, like, for example, what I was saying earlier about the bananas or whatever, if, you know, if, if the, if the bananas are flying off the shelf faster than they can be restocked, it might be more useful to you to talk about the vector is the number is the is the rate that which uh, the the bananas are being restocked is that increasing is that decreasing for some of you you might not want to do that because you don't want to get caught up with the double negative so if you say the the rate at which the 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 car is going is decreasing by negative five miles an hour you've you've already shot yourself in the foot because you're saying that it's decreasing at a negative rate and they the negatives cancel out so if you're going to use the vector just use the word change don't worry about increasing don't worry about decreasing if you're using the scalar then you have to talk about increasing versus decreasing or speeding up versus slowing down or what have you. All right. So just be aware of all that. Just be aware of all that because it does make a difference when they grade. And it could be the different that could be the difference between uh, getting a four and getting a five. So just be aware of that. Okay. Um, we found the speed at the endpoints of the interval. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to uh, scooch this up a little bit. Make some room. Now we want the acceleration. So we found the speed, the velocity function is this one, right? 2t minus 8. Let me get a different color even. And now we want the acceleration. Well, remember, we take the derivative of velocity to get the acceleration. The derivative of 2t is just the number 2. Remember, when it's just a number in front of a t like this, where there's no exponent, you can just get rid of the t, and you get 2. The derivative of just a constant, a number, negative 8, 0 every time. If you, if you see, hey, what's the derivative of a number? You should not be taking time to think about that. The answer, whenever you whenever you have that situation, just zero automatically without even having to think. What is the derivative of the square root of 2? Zero, because square root of 2 is like 1.4 something. What's the derivative of e squared? Well, isn't that just 8 point something? It's still zero. So it doesn't matter. Don't Don't overthink the derivative of just a number. It just goes away. All right, so now we have our acceleration. Two, in this case, again, the units here are meters per second squared. So now we want to know what the acceleration is at the endpoints. Well, look, is there a T in here anywhere? No. If I plug in T, if I plug in zero for T, does that change the fact that this is just the number two? No, it doesn't. So at t equals 0, a of 0 equals 2 meters per second squared. At t equals 5, what's a of 5, I plug it in, it doesn't change. It's still 2. So what we can say about this particular body that's being dragged along the uh, <laughs> dragged along the coordinate line is that its acceleration is constant. Whatever's happening, it's speeding up at the same rate throughout the entire 
time, right? It's always speeding up at a at a um, rate of two meters per second squared, right? So now what we need to know is when, if ever, during this interval from zero to five, does the body change direction? So in order to understand what's going on here, in order to understand what's going on here, we need to talk about what is happening when we change direction. Obviously, throughout this entire time, the position is changing and going back and forth and what have you. The, um, the velocity is changing. It's, it's, it's becoming more and more or less and less each time. The acceleration is staying the same. So what we need to know is when does it change direction? If something changes direction, what happens to it? It's moving, 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 and now it's going to change direction. What happens at that spot when it changes direction? What did it have to do in order to be able to change direction? Stop. Yeah, it had to stop. That's exactly right. So what we're what this is asking and i'm gonna again i'm gonna scooch all this up this is gonna get real gross up top here and i apologize for that but you know it is what it is you want that i just want this part you there we go so look it has to stop it has to have the velocity be zero so when you see the phrase change direction, I want you to stop what you're doing and remember change direction That's a key that's a key phrase. That means that means velocity has to be zero so well we know what the velocity is it's it's 2t minus 8 right we, we calculated that here we calculated that up here somewhere in this mass so let's just do that where where does it change direction well Let's solve for t. What we get is that the place where it changes direction is at the four second mark. So basically, our body got thrown back, but now it's it's slowing down, and then it stops at four seconds, and now it's going forward again. So this is a very important phrase, change direction. If you see this keyword anywhere, stop and write down change direction means velocity equals zero and if you do that suddenly this problem is going to be blown wide open because you're going to know exactly what to do all right so that's it so here is part a we got part b and part c let's do more and I, I I tried to make sure that the um, the problems used different keywords so that we could get to see all the different ways they're going to tell us things. So here they're literally just telling you what's going on. Find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. 
Okay. Well, in order to do that first, we need to figure out where the velocity is zero, right? In order to do that, we need to have the velocity function. We've got the we've got the position function. Let's get the velocity function. So remember that the derivative of position is velocity. So let's take the derivative of position with respect to time. So we we do this part first. The derivative of negative t cubed negative 3t squared, right? Next part, the derivative of 9t squared, bring that 2 down, 9 times 2 is 18, and we're left with just a 1 up here, so we're just going to put a t minus. The derivative of 15t, well, when you take the derivative of a linear term, the t just goes away and you're left with 15. So we now are capable of finding the place where the velocity is zero. So let's set that equal to zero. This is um, a quadratic function. We have the ability to figure this out. If you would prefer to use the quadratic formula, if the quadratic form formula is your friend, you can. Even still, I would recommend that you factor out a, a, a negative three to make your life easier right and then once i'm here now i'm saying like well no i'm not going to use the quadratic formula this is just that right negative one times negative five equals five negative one plus negative five equals negative six i don't need to use the quadratic formula for this one and i'm just going to solve for t here t equals five here t equals one these are our two places so now we have found we have found each time that the velocity is zero this is each time at one and five so now they want us to find the body's acceleration at those times so so in order to do that we need to get the acceleration so let's let's take care of that real quick the formula for acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So velocity prime is acceleration. And we take the derivative of that, bring down the 2, we get negative 6t. Derivative of 18t is just 18. And then the derivative of negative 15 is just 0. So now, We've got our acceleration, and we want to know what the acceleration is at 1. So we just plug it in, right? A of 1 is what? Does it say what the time is? It doesn't. So we're just going to presume seconds. That's fine. And now we found it at 1. Now let's find it at the other spot, 5, right? Just going to plug it in. So now negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Plus 18 should be negative 12. And again, I'm going to just go with meters per second squared. These are in seconds. Can't forget that. All right, so there's part A. So it says find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. All we did is we went through and we found when is the velocity zero? These spots. Now that we did that, go back. What's the acceleration at those spots? Well, at the first spot, it's this. At the second spot, it's this. OK. Let's do part B. 
and I'm going to scoot you up. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out the speed each time the acceleration is zero. Well, what's the acceleration? We did that already. Don't reinvent the wheel. You already have the acceleration function, which is negative 6t plus 18. When is it zero? Well, let's find out. When is acceleration zero? What time? You know, you're going to solve for t, add, divide. You should get t equals 3. I hope everybody sees that. And so now we found each time the acceleration is zero, we found it. There's only one, but we found each time. So now we're going to do what speed at three seconds? Well, speed is just the absolute value of velocity. So let's first find the, the velocity at three seconds. That's um, up here, right? Negative 3t squared, t is 3, plus 18 times t, t is 3, minus 15. So we've got 3 squared is 9, times negative 3, negative 27. 18 times 3, 54, yeah? Minus 15. And then you do that. Uh, 27 and 15 make 37, 42. So we want 54 minus 42, which is 12, right? So the velocity at 3 is 12. But we want the speed. The speed at 3 is the absolute value of 12. Speed, I'm going to do SP. And that is still 12. All right. Now, this last one is the, I would say this one is sort of the, the tricky one, not because it's going to be difficult to do, but... What you need to be aware of, again, the key phrase here, they are on purpose saying all this extra, all this extra words, total distance traveled. That's not displacement. It's not saying starting at zero and going to two, what's the difference between their ending points, it's saying figure out what the actual total distance that was traveled along the way. If I go front and then I go back, I have to, how much is this? Then how much is this, right? So what we need to do is we need to figure out where you stopped and potentially changed direction, right? And as we said earlier, where does it stop when V is zero, right? So what we need to do is we need to find where V equals zero. But we did that already, right? We did that already. And that's the great part about having done all this. Don't reinvent the wheel. We already found where V was zero. We already found at the time when the body stopped moving, and potentially change direction. It happened at one second, and it happened at five seconds, right? So what you can do is you can just start there. You can say, all right, well, hold on a minute. So we have to break this up into two situations, right? So we start at t equals zero, and we're going to go to the place where we stop. And we're going to find the distance traveled here. Then, since this is the only place where you stopped and potentially changed direction, 
now we're good to go to the other endpoint and figure it out from there. And again, we are not looking to, uh, like if he went here and then came back a little bit, we don't want this distance. We want this distance plus this distance. So it's very possible that the distance traveled here might be like negative or something. Don't bother with that. Just find find the the change. Don't don't worry about negative or positive. All right, can everybody still hear me? I just was red for a second. Everybody good? I I see my little thing moving. So, I'm hoping everybody can hear me. All right, so Let's find this distance from zero to one. Well, what is it? Um, we got to figure out what the distance is at zero. Zero, zero, zero. So we're starting out at zero. That's great. And then at t equals one, let's plug it in. One cubed is one. So this is, this is negative one. I'm going back up here to the top here, uh, plugging in one here. One squared times nine, well, that's just nine. And then negative 15 times one is minus 15. So we got negative one, a negative 15, and positive nine. We combine all those and we get six, negative six, right? All right, this is negative 1 plus 9 minus 15. That should give us negative 6, I hope. No, negative 7. Never said I was good at math. No, I'm kidding. I'm okay. So we've got start out at 0 meters, went to negative 7 meters, so the distance here is... A distance of seven. Remember, I said don't worry about whether or not where it's positive or negative. We're talking about where did he go? So he went. He was at zero. He went back seven. Now we're going to see what happens here. So this is the same thing again. Don't reinvent the wheel. You already did this one. This is already negative seven meters. Don't don't reinvent the wheel. Don't do it again. That's just a waste of time. Now we're going to do at time equals two. So this is. Again, we're going to plug it in, negative, uh, negative, and then we're going to do 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is 8, so negative 8. 2 squared is 4 times 9. That's 4 times 9 is 36, right? And then negative 15 times 2 is 30. And so now we look here, it went negative 8, 36, 30. Uh, 36 minus 30 is 6. 6 minus 8 is negative two. So the place where he ends is at negative two meters. And so the distance he traveled from negative seven to negative two had better be five, right? Well, so now he, from here to here, he went seven. From here to here, he went five. So the total, in total, Seven plus five is twelve meters traveled between T equals zero and T equals two. So again, if they're asking about Total distance traveled. That is a, again, that's a key phrase. Total distance traveled. You are talking about figuring out where all the way he goes in one direction. And then if he stops, how, does he, how much does he go the other direction? And then, like, if he stops again, then you do it again and so on. So if he zigzags, you want to know how many this way, how many that way, how much this way, how much that way etc etc right 
Okay. Again, remember I was saying they're not going to be talking about Earth here for something like this. They've got here the 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 equation for free fall is 2.84 t squared. That's going to go up. Shouldn't that be negative? So it's it's at rest it's a, it's zero right at, at t equals zero it's zero and then you let it go and it whoop, flies away that's funny I like it I like it that's, this is a funny planet right so we want to know when it's going to reach a velocity of twenty seven meters per second so we have s of t in meters per second. But what we want is V of T, and that's just the derivative of our displacement. So the derivative, we multi bring this two down, multiply it by two, uh, 5.68 T. And this is in me now meters per second. And what we want to know is where is this 27? Well, let's divide. I don't feel like dividing that. Y'all can't see my calculator, but it's here. I'll make it so y'all can see my calculator. It's not fair. You should get to see my calculator too. All right. So look, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna do t and and on the AP exam, show this step before you throw it in the calculator. Actually, you could technically just leave it here. <laughs> you could leave it here and just say, "Hey, that is my answer." It's funny. Meters per second uh whoop, whoop. sorry meters oh, seconds because it's time right how long takes this long well what is this long because i guarantee you on math excel they're gonna be annoyed if you do that so 27 divided by that's not the division sign that's also not the division sign ah This is what happens when you're not using the keypad like you're supposed to. 5.68. So that, that number of seconds is how long it's going to take to reach that velocity that we want. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. On the AP exam, don't, don't be a friend to your grader. Give them this fraction. Just leave it there. Who wants to take precious seconds and do more than this? Just leave it there. Make your grader earn their $1,600 and free vacation stay and whatever that they get. They get, they get before, before the COVID thing and they actually had to go somewhere. They, they got, they got a free plane trip. Every meal was paid for. a free hotel room, and a stipend. Make them earn that. Leave it as 27 over 5.68. But if for some reason you are told to round or you are asked to give the answer in a way where you have to actually do that, four decimal places, five sure. And make sure you round correctly. So, four decimal places. That's a two, so this gets truncated. And so, 
seconds. Final answer. OK. So it's a lot, a lot of more of the same stuff. Find the velocity and acceleration at the time that they give you. Well, t at time t, so they just want you to take the derivative. So find v of t and find a of t. So just take the derivative, then take the derivative again. How long does it take for it to reach its highest point? Here's another very, 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 very important key phrase. Highest point, lowest point means vertex. It means that you're throwing a rock up in the air, it gets to a spot, and then it stops. Velocity equals zero. Highest point, it's about to change direction and come falling back right onto you. So here, velocity equals zero. So you go through, you found your velocity, uh, 24 minus 1.6 T. So how long does it take to reach its highest point? Well, at what time does it reach its highest point? Let's find out. It's T equals 24 divided by 1.6. That comes out to some kind of whole number. Um, three over 0.2, so like 15. Am I right? Sounds right. I'm going to double check because I don't trust myself. 24 divided by... 1.6. Hey, I was right. 15. Hey, 15 seconds. From zero to its highest point, where the velocity equals zero, it took 15 seconds to get there. Now, this this third part, part C, how high does the rock go? What's it what's it asking? It's asking for what is S at 15 seconds, right? Because how high does it go? Well, that high, right? The height at 15 seconds. So this is asking for S of 15. That's an S. Well, let's do that. S of 15 is just plugging in 15 here for T, right? I'm about to write a T again. Okay, so that's going to come out to a, a whole number somehow. I don't want to do 0. 0.8 times 15 squared, though. 15 times 15 times 0. 0.8. It's 180. That's nice. Uh, 360 for this one minus 180 equals 180 and what's the units meters how long does it take the rock to reach half its maximum height well now it's saying okay how long does it take the rock to reach not 180 meters that's its maximum height but half its maximum how long does it take to reach 90 how long does it take for s to be 90 So what you're going to do is just um, use the, you can, once you get everything over, 0.8t squared minus 24t plus 90 equals zero. I'm pretty sure you can simplify that. Yeah, 
fact. What's 90 divided by 0 0.8? 90 divided by 0 0.8. Oh, not quite. So here, use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. One twelve one twelve point five times four is four fifty all over two a two times a and then you're just gonna solve this. There are gonna be two answers. Um let's see, so we got thirty plus or minus the square root of four fifty. Um There's a nine in there and there's a 25 in there for sure, right? Nine times 25 times two. Well, either way, yeah, because this is, yeah, so we got 30 plus or minus, this breaks down, if you, like, here, I'll do it over here. If you like, I always like to try and break down easy. Two, three, three, five, five. Pair of fives, pair of threes. So we got three and five is 15, radical two over two. And you would put that into the, you would put that into the calculator and your answer should be the smaller of the two numbers if it's if they're both positive, which I think they both are, yeah? 30 minus 15 radical two is still positive. So, so here, let me show you. So. Just check them both if you're not sure. Why did that have a... And then take that divided by two. So it takes, so again, you know, you wanna do four decimal places in this case, right? Uh, 4.3934, because that nine is going to round it up to a four, right? And then the last one, how long is the rock aloft? So all we're looking to do now is just figure out when it hits the ground, ain't it? Well, let's do that. I'm going to scooch all this up here. Because how long does it take for the rock to hit the ground? Aloft, that's a that's a really big word to just mean in the air, right? When does it hit the ground? So much easier to understand than how long is the rock aloft? When does it hit the ground? When is when is s the height zero? So you go through and you're gonna solve. I like I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this so that it's better. I'm gonna throw everything over to the other side. Zero point eight t squared minus 24t. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for myself. Uh, okay, so I can factor out a t. Right? 
now all I'm going to do here is, okay, so t equals zero. So it started off on the ground. Where does it end up on the ground? Well, where is 0 0.8 t minus 24 equal to zero? Let's add and divide. We should get something like 30, I bet. All right. 24 divided by 0.8. Yeah, 30. So it starts off on the ground. It ends up on the ground at 30 seconds. So how long is the rock aloft? From 0 seconds to 30 seconds. The rock is aloft for 30 seconds. Let's see if we can find more keywords. Oh, here they want you to find, so here they're asking you to find the, the gravitational constant of the surface. And they tell you that the uh, launch velocity was 21 meters per second. So, okay. Here's, here's all the key information. You read this. Launch velocity. That means at t equals zero, velocity is 21 meters per second. Because the acceleration of gravity was we don't know, the explorers expected the ball bearing to reach a height of blah, t seconds later. This is my s of t. That's important. The ball bearing reached its maximum height. What does maximum height mean again? The velocity equals zero at t equals 30. We're going to need all of this, right? Because we need to figure out what the, what the gravitational constant is. So first of all, we don't care about s. We want to find v. So let's get v. Derivative of 21t is just 21 minus the derivative of 1 half gs t squared. We can just leave this gs alone and this half alone. The 2 and the half are going to cancel out, right? I'm not even going to write the sub s. It doesn't matter. gs of t, whatever. So look. At t equals zero, velocity is 21 meters per second. If I plug that in, that's that's true. I'm good there. That doesn't help us find g, right? Because if I plug in zero for t, the g gets annihilated. Useless. Let's do this one. When v of t equals zero, then t equals 30. So V of 30 equals zero, and then we're just going to plug in uh, 30 for T. So we've got 21 minus GS times 30 for T, and then we can solve. And it's going to end up being 21 over 30, which if you must simplify, you're letting the greater off easy. Meters, right? Meters per second squared. They give it to you, but you should be expected to know that. They're giving you that the time is in seconds and the distance is in meters, so the, the acceleration is going to be meters per second squared. Or if you prefer, 0.7. Either way, same thing. Um... Same idea, what's the object's velocity, speed, and acceleration? We've done all this before. Velocity speed and acceleration. So speed, just make sure you take the absolute value. 
Velocity is the first derivative. Acceleration is the second derivative. How long does it take for the object to hit the ground? Well, it's saying when s equals 0, what is t? So you just plug that in, solve for t. And you're going to get a couple different answers. You don't want the negative t answer, right? So you've got 0 equals 184 minus 16t squared. Solve for t. Does 184 divided by 16 come out nice and even? Probably doesn't. It's pretty close. And then we square root. Plus or minus. And obviously, we don't want to go back in time, right? How long does it take the object to hit the ground? Oh, negative, negative three seconds. No, no, positive. So T, your final answer should be the positive, whatever this is. What is the object's velocity at that moment of impact? Hit the ground. S equals zero. Hey, we found where what it is here. Well, let's. What's the velocity, right? Velocity is the derivative of this guy, which should be negative 32t, right? Well, what's t? It's radical 11.5. Meters, no, sorry, feet per second. Again, why are you doing more effort than you need? Don't do more effort than you need. Make your greater earn their money. Here's a really good one. Because th they give you, this picture is the velocity. And they're going to be asking you questions about the location. They're going to be asking you questions about speed. They're going to want you to graph the speed and graph the acceleration where it's defined. Okay. So let's, let's just start out here. Where does the body reverse direction? Well, remember... If it's going forward and then it stops, maybe it's going to reverse direction. So where does it stop? Okay, well, it's at zero here, 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 and here. Where does it reverse direction? Positive velocity, negative velocity at two and at four, right? When is it moving at a constant speed? Constant means same, right? Well, no, 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 yes. Constant speed starts at 5 until 8, right? Technically, we should be doing well, whatever. From 5 to 8. Depending on the book, they might prefer brackets and they might prefer parentheses. It just depends on how they define the region. Uh, you're probably okay using brackets or parentheses on the AP exam. Um, every time I've talked to them about that, because it, it changes from book to book. Some books uh, define intervals as open. Others define intervals as closed. And so usually they accommodate both. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now, it says graph the body's speed for 
zero all the way to 10. Well, what speed but the absolute value of velocity? So the only part that we actually know is going to change is, is the part that's negative, right? Well, here, this part's negative. So everything else is the same. You're just going to go boop, boop. Okay, how does this become different? It goes down to negative two. Or shouldn't it be going up to positive two? So it should just go boop, boop. This is the only difference, the whole thing. Otherwise, it's the same. Now it's saying graph the acceleration where defined. So here's the thing about that. smooth and continuous in order for things to be in order for things to be good to work with if you take the derivative of something and it's not smooth and it's not continuous you can't take that derivative look at right here from it's up to over one rise over run here the the derivative, remember, derivative is slope, right? So here the derivative is 2, right? From this constant area, this constant place, constant of 2. But is it going to be defined here at 1? No, because it's not smooth. You see that it's got a sharp corner here? So I've got an open circle right here. Now, what's the acceleration going downwards? Well, it's down 4 over 2. Down 4 over 2. Well, that's just negative 2, right? Again, you can't have a derivative here. You can't have a derivative here at the end point, right? When we go back here, what's the slope here again? Up one, two, three, four, over one, two. Four over two is just two again. And again, you're you've got an open circle. And an open circle, because it's changing here automatically. Now look, what's the slope when you've got a horizontal line? Horizontal lines have a slope of zero every time. And then this last one, down 2 over 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So our last part is going to be here, like that. So look at what we did. It's just, what's the slope of this part? 2. What's the slope of this part? Negative 2. What's the slope of this part? 2. 0, negative 1. And we just plotted all the way through. That's what tells you to graph it. OK, so a lot of this is just reading the graph. How f So this is basically saying a rocket is shooting upwards, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to shoot upwards, and then it is going to start falling and then an explosive pops out a little parachute and then it drifts down right so look this is this is not displacement again this is a graph of your velocity so what we want to know how fast was the rocket climbing when the engine stopped well where do you think the engine stopped Right here, right? How fast was it climbing? Well, it's just a matter of trying to read that. It looks like it's like 195 in feet per second. For how many seconds did the engine burn? Well, okay, well started burn 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 <laughs> it 
stopped. Whereas that looks like it's about about two. But the rocket burns and it stops. Does it just immediately? No. It's still going to coast even after the rocket dies, right? So, again, where's the highest point? Where velocity is zero. I'm going to do my best here, but it looks like it's something like this. Looks like 8.1-ish. 8. 8. Because it, even though, even, the, so basically here, it goes zoop, and then the the rocket dies on them. And then it now it's it's coasting, it's coasting, it's coasting, it's coasting, it's coasting, it's coasting. And after 8.1 seconds, it hits the top of that arc. And then it starts to fall. What was the rocket's velocity when it reached to its highest point? Zero. We're going to talk about highest point. If, it, if the rocket's velocity was above zero, it would have been keeping going up. So rocket's velocity when it reaches its highest point had better be zero feet per second. Otherwise, something's really wrong. Now we want to know when did the parachute pop out. So it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. What happens here? Funk. Parachute falls out, right? That's why it... That's why it starts falling slower and slower and slower, more and more and more um, closer to zero again. So this right here, this is the point when it pops out, and it looks like that's something kind of like 10.8. And how fast was the rocket falling? Follow this, it's like here. And now, remember what I was saying about, remember what I was saying about it. Vector or scalar, pick one, don't double dip. The rocket was falling, not at a negative, because you don't fall at a negative, right? Use the scalar since they're using this loaded term of falling. If it said the rocket was traveling at the speed of then you could say negative i'm going to say like negative 80 this is like the number negative 85 down here so we're going to say the rocket was falling at 85 feet Per second. Yeah? How long did the rocket fall before the parachute opened? Well, let's see. Where did it start falling? Here. At 8.1. When did the parachute open? 10.8. So that's like 2.7 seconds, right? Again, you know, you when you write all this stuff down... It all makes a lot more sense. When was the rocket's acceleration the greatest? When was it the highest? When is it accelerating fastest? Wouldn't that be like right before the rocket starts to die? Here? When did this happen? Not about two seconds. When was the acceleration constant? Well, constant acceleration, that's a that's a linear velocity. Right? Starting here, going to here. When was the acceleration constant? Well, from two all the way to that ten point eight. So from two all the way to the 10.8. What was the acceleration then? 
what's the acceleration when you're falling in feet per second squared? And at negative 32? Now, if you actually like rise over run, do this, you'll find it's negative 32. But Ta-da. There's, there's plenty more types of problems. Um, this one, same sort of stuff as what we already did. This one, um, this one's really cool. I'm going to, it'll take two seconds to do. We want to find the, the rate that the volume changes. So take the derivative. If you take the derivative, you'll find that it's 4 pi r squared at 7 inches. So that's 4 times 49. It's like whatever 98 times 2 is. 196. So we got 196 pi for part A, right? That's what the volume that's what the rate is of the volume at seven seconds. Using the rate from part A, by approximately how much does the volume increase when the radius changes from seven to seven point five? Well, this is this is rate per unit time, right? This is how many inches cubed per inch, right? Sure, inches cubed per inch. That's what they give us per one inch. But we want per half inch, right? So what's half of this? Because we only want from 7 to 7. Point, we don't want from 7 to 8. That would be 196 pi because that's the, that's the rate. We want half the rate from 7 to 7.5. Seven well, it's half of 196. Get that 98 pi inches cubed per inch. Well, inches cubed. 